Okay, so let's talk about using the two-sided, V-Ray two-sided material and using this correctly and understanding the parameters. Um, I'm going to create some lampshades with it. I think that's one of the most usual uh, uses for it. Uh, but we basically need to understand this and understand what the parameters mean in order to get the correct result. Otherwise, you're going to get you know, maybe almost the result which you want, but not really quite, and you'll just keep going from there. But these are the parameters. You, it looks like this. You have front, back material, translucency, a color here, which is really a percentage. Um, then you have multiply by front diffuse and four single-sided submaterials. So if we take a look at this, basically here it is with some um, the V-Ray two-sided material I've created, which is this one. Okay, let's grab a V-ray two sided material. Let's grab a V-ray material. And we're just gonna plug this straight here. Like if you look here, you press M to bring up this material editor or, or click on here to bring it up. And then what you need is this front material here. So we're gonna plug this V-ray material into that front material. Now we have a bitmap here and it looks like this. And the tiling on this is 2 and 0.5, which is correct for these. If I put this into the diffuse slot here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign this. Let me just select instances, and if I press Alt-Q, well, you can see there, those have all been selected, and I'm just going to assign this to it. And I want this bitmap to be visible, so I'm going to come here and I'm going to click Show Shaded Material in Viewport. And you can see here, you can see that, you know, the mapping here is correct. And usually what you'll have on such a map, on such a such an object, is you'll get a UVW map. Oh, they're all selected, hang on. Just select one of them. You'll get a UVW map. And someone will put it on cylindrical. And they'll just leave this like this. So, Due to this, you have to come and just adjust the tiling here on the bitmap because by default, if this is one and one, you know, if I come in here, you can see the tiling there is not correct. So, you know, you can bring this up until you get it to where you think it should be uh, two, and you know, it's a bit tight here. So that's why I did 0.5 just to make it less tight, and and that's that. Uh, of course, the other way of doing it is you can leave this at one and one, and then you can do this. Uh, so you can al you can always come in here and adjust these. Uh, you can't really come in here and adjust those because you can see, you know, you start getting weird stuff here. And it just brings it back to what it was before. It just makes it wider. The height you can adjust with this one. But um, if you turn on real world scan off, it brings it back to normal. The easiest way I find is you just select here and just adjust it here, get it to what you like, and 2 and 0.5 is something which I like. All right, now if I leave it at default here, okay, I've got this material in here. Without checking this, I don't need to put in any back material. It's going to use this one automatically as the back material. Translucency by default is exactly halfway at 128. And then this slider here is at 100. Multiply by front diffuse, you don't normally use, and four single-sided submaterials. But we'll have a look and just see what those do. So now if Alt W, Alt W, just bring this up. Sorry, let's bring up the render box. And we're just gonna render this, just this region, so you can see what happens. So this is all blown out. Basically, the lighting I have, like on checking the lighting, what I've done is I've got in, in V-Ray, in the environment tab here, I have these with these HDRIs on, so I'm getting GI from this and reflection from this and refraction from that. So now with those turned off, if I just turn this off, I should be getting a black render. Yeah, I'm getting nothing, which is what I want. Um, if I come in here and then I turn the chandelier light on and I get rid of my region, You'll see I'm getting some beautiful light here from these. So we know the multiplier of these is good. 
and that's really pretty much how I want it and I've got the multiplier here set at 100 on those so but now I need to get this correct so the next thing which I do is I come in here and I basically just take this translucency and bring this down so we'll try that it's just a guess and we're just going to press F9 and you can see they're still too bright so I'm going to stop that and we'll bring this even further down we'll try it right down low SF9. Okay, we're getting something which we want. I'm just going to turn the region on so it renders out quick. I've got denoiser on, which is why it's doing this. I'll probably turn it off for the next one. But you can see this is roughly what we want here on the outside, but the inside now is all blown out. And so this is often what you'll have with V-Ray two-sided material. So what you do at this stage is you need to put in a second material here in the back material. So you turn this and you click this on back. And what I'm going to do is just shift and left click and drag this one down and put that into the back material. And then on here, I'm going to put a color correction. So just go maps, general, color correction, and drag and drop that in there. Double click on this. We want to make this fairly dark because if I leave it as is, you can see it's just going to get that blown out. So I'm going to try point 0.2 on here. And that makes it very dark. And then I'm going to render. Let's see what that does. Okay, so now we're getting this. This looks better. But it's not really what we want. So what we're going to do, first of all, on the inside, I think we need to desaturate this a bunch. And I'm going to make this point. try point 0.4. Okay, we're just going to take this one step at, this t at a time just so you can see what's going on. So that point 0.4 is too high. Point 0.2 was, a, you know, it was okay. It was a bit... So now we have this. Okay, so the next thing here which I'm going to want to do with this, you can see this outside bit here is too, um, too dark now. So let me just take these off. This is the new material here which we're creating. So you can see this is too dark. So what we're going to do is we're just going to brighten it up. And again, we're going to put a color correction in here. And we'll just try to put this up at 2. And we'll see how that goes. Okay, I'm going to bring this translucency back to halfway. Let's see if we can sort this out. And that's about right. So the translucency doesn't really do what you think it does. The translucency, you think, okay, this is how translucent the material is. But what it actually does is it determines which side, front or back, relative to the camera is more visible in the rendering process. So by default, it's 0.5, which means both are visible to the same degree. When you bring it all the way down to zero, the material facing the camera is going to be seen when it's close to one more of the back material is going to be seen. So that's how this changes. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it here about 86. And then we might need to adjust these slightly. That looks pretty nice. We can maybe make the turn off this denoiser. Uh, we can maybe make this dark one here a little bit lighter. Let's try 0.5. Chance are that'll be too light, but yeah. That's three five. I just want some variation. The tones there were too similar. And I want to see the inside a bit lighter than the outside. So here we can see that light hitting and we can get this lovely effect around here where it's darker on the edges and lighter on the edges here. So, and that's what we're looking for. And that's really how you should be using, it, you know, in such a scene, the V-Ray two-sided material because it just allows you to control that you can see this and this isn't blown out and that the outside here you know, looks nice and has a nice effect. 
And just as one last thing, as I know some people will be wondering, uh, the lights here. Oops. Just press top and Z. Let's close these down. So the light here is that. And it's just a ball where the light bulb should be. And I've come into options, I've put invisible on, and I've uh, left effect reflections, turn that off so we don't get a ball in the reflections. Um, and then I've just put the multiplier up to, a, uh, to an amount which I think looks good. So, that's really it. That's really all there is to it. It's fairly simple. You know, if you want to tweak this material, you can always come along and tweak it and, you know, you can have a look at adding in some reflection and adding in some reflective glossiness at that point five. Um, this is a fabric, so for fabric I'm going to come in and make this GTR one. I might make this glossiness, actually make this reflection higher. Uh, another thing, you can do all sorts of things to make these more photorealistic, you know. Uh, you can come in here and you can put some anisotropy on point four and put this on anisotropy rotation and if you want to see what this is doing you can bring this up to one okay anyway all of these little things will will make a change and will make it more photorealistic um, but to be honest when you're looking at photorealism what you should be asking yourself is I'm just doing this so that I don't have to add put those changes I just made into here. What you should be doing asking yourself is does it look correct? Are you happy with it? Because if it looks correct, you know, there's no point in adding in a bump and adding in all of this detail extra detail which you can add. You can add it for sure. But if it looks good, then don't bother. Because often, you know, you'll put a bump in and you'll think, yeah, that's great, I love bump. But when you actually come to render, it'll look incorrect, and you'll be tweaking things, and it'll add render time, and all stuff which you don't really have. So, you know, like I say, if you don't need to do it, if you don't, like all these changes, this, and this, and this, I'm just showing you some things which you can do to make it more photorealistic. In production, I wouldn't do these. I would leave it as simple as possible that I get a nice render from. And we've already seen that we get a nice render, so, you know, that's nice. So you don't have to do these extra bits to get it looking, oh, extra nice. There's, chances are there's going to be no difference. But your render will take twice as long. And that's how you use V-Ray two-sided material. You just see if there's anything else on here. I don't think so. That's your front material. You check that if you put in a back material. Put in a back material for, for definitely for things like lampshades when you need it to be you know, not all blown out on the inside. And then just use a color correction to make it darker. Uh, this translucency really says which percentage you want to use this one and which percentage you want to see this one. So just be aware of that when you're sliding this back and forth. Um, and then you have these two, which, you know, you're not really going to be doing this. If you turn this one off, you're going to end up with that. It's like single-sided submaterials. So it's just weird. So you're really not going to be using that. Uh, and then multiply by front diffuse, you're really not going to be using that either. There's no difference here, but if you read what the chaos groups say about it, they say when enabled, the translucency is multiplied by the diffuse of the front material. So in our case, the front material is quite light, so you're not really seeing much difference there. We can see if there's any difference with that on. Uh, if I just save this, turn it off render again and then stop and save you can see it's slightly darker you see so you know what I always say is just play around with them and know what they're doing and then you know if needed you can check this and use it um, but yeah you can see the difference that's definitely multiplying by the front diffuse so that's up to you if you want to use that or not. 
And that's it. That's really all there is to V-Ray two-sided material. But that's kind of important, and that will get you out of a lot of a lot of situations, and you can make this look really, really nice.